you can't just start out with, I want to be a photographer and not have a portfolio. People want to see what your work looks like. They want to see your style. They want to know that they can trust you to take their pictures. Welcome to the Horse Trailer Post podcast, the show where we cover anything and everything related to the horse trailer industry. I'm your host, Brad Heath, owner and operator of Double B Trailers. With over 25 years of experience in the horse industry, I'm excited to bring you the latest news, tips, and insights into everything equine. Can't wait to share my passion for horses and horse safety with all of you. So saddle up and join me every other week for the Horse Trailer Post podcast. Guys, thanks for joining us today, the Horse Trailer Post. Uh, we have Lauren Pace with us. She's in California, and um, she is an equestrian photographer. Of course, she specializes in equestrian fine art and Western photography. So, Lauren, welcome to our podcast. Well, thank you, Brad, for bringing me on. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, we'll just jump right in. I'll let you take Lee. Can you start by sharing your personal journey with horses, how it evolved into a passion for equestrian photography. Yeah, absolutely. Well, so I was born into horses, <laughs> pretty much. My parents met showing horses, and uh, by the time I was born, they were breeding and training Western performance horses. So I started showing horses by the age of about four. Um, you know, like lead line classes, but um, Western pleasure um, from then on. Um, my family has had so many horses over my lifetime, but there have been a few that were solely my horses, my, my little pony when I was young. Um, and then my show horses later on and, um, not to like age myself or anything, but back when I was growing up, there was really no, um, niche photography that was dedicated to girls and their horses um or or horse and rider portrait photography um you know and and back then you had a roll of film and what you took was what you got uh, and hopefully you got a good one <laughs> yeah um so there were there have been a couple of horses in my lifetime that I've had that I look back and really wish that I had special photos to remember them by um one of my horses uh i he was my first my very own show horse um and i think i was mm, six when i got him and i had him until i was about 24 um when he finally had to be put down and it was um such a sad day for me i had him a long time and he was yeah one of the horses, you know, I grew up alongside him and um, girls, you know, I, I have two girls of my own now and a son and I watch them with their horses and um, horses, they're special creatures. They, they aren't just our animals. They, um, I know so many friends, equestrians, their horse is their therapist. Their horse is their best friend. It's not just an animal to them. It's their, um, it's family. Um, these big creatures, they empathize with us. Um, we spend tons of money we don't have on them. And it's, it's not a, um, it is a lifestyle. It is what we do we live and breathe it and the barn is um one of our favorite places to be and so i i have seen that over my lifetime um so that's that's horses to me right um as far as photography goes the other side of it when i was in high school i took a high school photography class my junior year and i had my old my dad's old um, manual camera it was taking pictures and, and editing um, very differently than we edit now. None of it was on the computer. It was in a dark room and you're developing your own film. And I fell in love with it. Um, a lot of what I would shoot 
as subjects. Some of it were, were my horses at the time. A lot of it was out in the barn, outside in nature. And um, I loved playing with exposure and um, natural light. And, and that's kind of where it started for me. Um, so I always kind of had photography as a hobby. And it just developed from there. Fast forward from high school, like 20 years. Um, I, well, and even before that, when I started having my children, um, I wanted to be able to take good pictures of them. So I had bought a used Canon Mark III camera and um, started, you know, watching YouTube videos and anything I could get my hands on to learn how to take and edit and that now it's digital. Um, and, and I'm kind of a perfectionist and, and obsess over things. So <laughs> if um, re-editing the same image 10 times finally yielded the results I wanted and it took all night, then so be it. <laughs> right, right. Uh, I can certainly hear the passion behind all of it, you know, growing up as a kid and your horse from what, age six to 24. That's a long time. Yeah. I've often told clients, I said, hey, you know, probably 90 percent of our clientele are female. And I've, I've told many over the years that we're married, I said, you know, most of who we deal with, they love their horses more than they do their husband. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a yeah, true I, statement in a, in a lot of situations, but uh, moving yeah. On, moving on, yeah, moving on from that before I get myself in trouble here. <laughs> so uh, one of the one of the topics, artistic vision, um, you have a, you know, a unique style, a unique approach in equestrian photography, especially with the use of natural light. So can you sort of describe that unique style that's particular to you, what you're looking for? Yeah, absolutely. I, when I go to a shoot, I don't take any, um, I, no special equipment other than my camera. And I always have an assistant, um, who's helping with ears because that's my, um, my style is having the horse look their best, um, which is, you know, ears forward and alert, um, with a soft eye and knowing how to get that. Uh, usually takes an assistant to help out while I'm shooting. Um, and I love um, playing around with light for a long time. And, and even still when I'm doing horse and rider portrait sessions um, for my clients, I have a very specific time of day that I shoot. I will only shoot um, either golden hour, uh, you know, before sunset or first thing in the morning. My preference is evening because um, I love the light a little bit more. And I love the experience it creates for my clients. Um, my One of my favorite things to do is to end their session with sunset silhouettes. And if you're doing it in sunrise, you're starting with the silhouettes, which is fine. But um, I love ending with them because I think it it kind of wraps up their experience in a fun way. Silhouettes are kind of my jam. I love, love silhouettes. But um, more recently, I've been experimenting and playing around with um, direct light. I typically shoot backlit where the sun, where I'm shooting more into the sun. The sun is behind my subject. Uh that's my preference for the look that I'm trying to create. Um, but direct light has uh, its own uniqueness. Um, sometimes like I don't love shooting it and then I'll get in and start editing, editing those images. And I find that I love the, the look it's creating. Um, it's not necessarily your um, soft romantic images but it gives a more almost a sense of um, strength and power to the images. Right. Um, and, and if a client requests that absolutely do it. 
But for personal work, I, I like to play around with that. And when I have models, um, I uh, model shoots that I've set up, I definitely do a little bit more of that to play around. Nice. So we were just a moment ago, we were talking about the emotion uh, with horses and, you know, the tie that's there, the bond. Um, what sort of emotion or narrative do you try to convey through your photographs and particularly when focusing on that bond between horse and human? I really love authentic and romantic images. And that's really what I'm trying to create. Horse and rider portraits, that's what, it, you know, especially us as women, we want to show the connection and the bond that we have with that animal. Um, because as I said earlier, it's not just an animal to us. It's, it's, um, our best friend. Right. Uh, so I'm, I talk a lot in my shoots, um, to help because nobody loves, unless you're a professional and nobody loves being in front of the camera, you always, you feel insecure. And, um, it, I try to make my clients feel as comfortable as possible, um, I really want them to feel the connection with their horse. Uh, so I, I I send out a questionnaire before all my client shoots that asks them what they're comfortable with, what's their favorite experience and memory with their horse so that I can get to know them a little bit more. Um, one question that I ask, and, and, and there are some women who, they love their horse, but they're not big on kissing their horse. So I want to know that. Um, if I say, you know, kiss your horse above their eye, I don't want them to be like, ew, gross. <laughs> right, right. I, I, yeah. So, um, and it's also important to me to have the horse in a setting. I mean, I, I do a lot of shoots at clients' barns, but I also do a lot where we're going to a location that the horse maybe hasn't been. So I want the horse to feel as comfortable as possible so that we do capture the best side of that horse um, where they're, you know, feeling at home with their owner. And um, but I do a lot of directing, telling, moving from one pose to another, telling the clients what to do um, so that they feel more comfortable. And usually I start out with um, headshots and then move into the rest of the poses. And a lot of them, um, some are posed, some are more candid. Uh, we might do a lot of walking and I, then I might have you get on your horse if that's what um, you're comfortable with at the time. And you might have the horse tacked up, you might have them just bareback. So, I really want to capture the vision of what the client is wanting, which is why it's important to, for me to um, get back that feedback in the questionnaires of what the their vision is. So for prepping, if I'm going to do a shoot with you, you'd send some question a questionnaire out that I would complete first to sort of give you what my goals would be as a horse owner, right? Yeah. I yeah. send out the questionnaire a few weeks before. I also have a welcome guide that um, gives a lot of information on preparing for a shoot. Not, I mean, it talks about outfit options and um, I am always here to help my clients with their outfits. I love um, helping them pick out the right details uh, for their shoots. I, the, the, the welcome guide also talks about how to get the horse ready, not just um, bathing, but um, you know, how to, most people, if they um, are showing their horse, know how to get them ready. But um, little tips, like if you have a new bit that you're, you know, wanting to try out for the shoot, it might not be the best time because that horse may not like it and they might be moving their mouth the whole time. So little tips like that, um, that I have learned over the years that make your shoot the best possible shoot yeah um we're still you know you mentioned the bond earlier we've talked about that a couple of times but one of the questions we have it says 
over the years, you've captured countless moments between horses and their their humans. So uh, do you have anything in particular, a story or a bond that's just sort of stood out to you the most over the years? There's a couple that come to my mind. Uh, I just did little sessions for both my daughters with their ponies. Mm -hmm. Um, They see me do well. And that's kind of what prompted me to start my business. I'll back up um, with that for a minute. One of the first shoots I did with horses and their riders were my daughters. They wanted a magical unicorn shoot with their pony. (laughs) And at this time I had not really even contemplated starting a business. Um, And so I got all the things. I got the unicorn horn and um, we did the floral wreath around her neck and the girls had their, you know, big poofy tulle dresses and they were so cute. Um, They were, gosh, I can't even remember. My oldest at the time was probably eight. And we had so much fun with it. And they love the images. They're in their room. They see them all the time. They talk about the shoot all the time. And that's kind of what got the wheels in my head turning. Um, And a lot of um, promptings from friends and family that this is what I should be doing. Um, So more recently, like within the last couple of weeks, they have different, well, one's the same pony. And then my oldest daughter has uh, her new pony that she's been riding, um, doing English riding and some jumping with. And we've had him now for about a year and she adores this pony. Yeah. Um, so little girls and their horses are so special. They, they just melt when they see them. Their, their eyes light up and their smiles are huge. And they give them the biggest hugs. And I I just love seeing that. Um, So those are always very special to me also because they're my own kids. Right, right. (laughs) Um, I love doing senior horse portrait shoots. Those older horses where people know their time is running out. And I I hate saying that because it it makes me choke up. But yeah. um, I had a client this past year. She used her horse for the mounted posse. She was law enforcement. Right. And um, he's getting older and he's still looking great. She saved up her money. Um, I met her well over a year before she reached out to me. And uh, so that that was a really special shoot. This shoot, the next one I was going to talk about, never came to fruition and it's so sad this client um or potential client she was had been following me on instagram for since i started i mean i remember her being one of my first followers she's fairly local about an hour away from me and she reached out to me finally wanting to do a shoot and um we were getting everything set up for the fall and the day I sent her the contract, she messaged me the next day and said her horse unexpectedly died. Oh no. And I mean, this, I had with the couple days before that, when I was on the phone with the lady, she, you know, described this horse as being her soulmate. And so it just broke my heart that she never got to do that shoot with that horse. Um, I tell people all the time, like, do the shoot, take the pictures, be in the photos. Right. You, you never know when it's going it, to, it, even if it's not with me, do it with somebody. <laughs> right. That's right. Do some selfies, if nothing else. Yeah. So moving to uh, a little different direction um, earlier, you made the comment or you mentioned that you have someone that helps you at your shoots. Mm-hmm. So uh, I've never had a photography session with horses. It's always with, you know, my family and a bunch of kids and just trying to get the kids to be still and to stand still and smile and all those. So how the heck do you manage that with a horse? I mean, what how do you manage those challenges of, you know, getting those poses that you're looking for? 
it's a lot of patience. <laughs> yeah. and, and unpredictability, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've learned to be very flexible. When I set up a horse, and, and when I say I, I direct and my assistant, it, my mom used to go to um, all my shoots with me. I mean, mm-hmm. who better than somebody who's exactly. been with horses for her entire life? Um, she was great. Uh, more recently, my fiance comes with me and he's amazing. Nice. But um, I direct on how I want the horse set up. Horses, just like kids, don't always do what you want them to do. And if they move into a different position and it works for that I am flexible. I move. I move around a lot. I, my um, preferred lens is not a zoom lens. I I use a zoom lens for certain shoots, um, depending on the location and how much walking and the terrain I might have to do. But my favorite lens is um, my 135 2.0 lens. And so I do a lot of walking because I'm zooming on my feet instead. Um, so I move around a lot during a shoot. I'm all over. I'm far back. I'm up close. Um, and my clients, you know, I just direct them. If if the horse moves, we're going to move into a different pose real quick. And, and oh, it just works. We get a lot of variety that way. And that's what I am going for during a shoot. That was another question that we had regarding maybe some advice for an upcoming equestrian photographer. You sort of touched on that. And I think you said uh, 135, 2.0. My 135. Yeah. So so go ahead. I I shoot. I'm a Canon shooter. I have all Canon products. It's Mm -hmm. just my preference. That's what I started out with. And I never switched over to anything else. Um, Not that anything else would work just great, but I use. I started out with my Mark three and then um, upgraded to a Mark four. I like to have two um, bodies with me all the time. If I have a malfunction with one body, I can quickly switch to another. Um, Last year I switched over from the DSLRs to mirrorless and I fell in love with them. I, I love my mirrorless cameras. So I'm shooting with an R5 and an R6. Um, and the lenses I use predominantly for all my equine sessions, it's either the 135 2.0 or the um, 70 to 200 2.8. Those are my only, I shoot video with them as well um, because I've in the past year also Um, started shooting video for my clients, whether it's a branding session for a business or um, even my horse and rider sessions. I do video clips for them because in the world we live in now with social media, everybody wants video too. Um, I, when I first started my business, I was, I will never shoot video. It's only going to be photos. And then I started doing video and I fell in love with it. I, um, have loved editing the videos and I love putting music to the videos and, and it's been fun. I, I kind of, it's been interesting watching my evolution. Usually if I say I'm never going to do this, I end up doing it. So Right. Yeah. Never say never. I, never I, I say said, never. I said, we're just going to manufacture like stock trailers and horse trailers, nothing fancy. And I'm definitely not getting into living quarters. That's way too complicated for me. And here we are. So never, here you say, are. Never. <laughs> here, never say never. So I was looking at your site, a uh, really cool site. And for those listening, it's Lauren Ann Pace, L-A-U-R-E-N-A-N-N last name Pace, P-A-C-E dot com. And one of the things that I saw, you know, in addition to your photography, you offer content retreats for equine photographers. So uh, can you explain a little bit about what these retreats entail and and really just kind of what inspired you to start that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, This past year, I teamed up with um, a friend and fellow photographer, She's from Washington, um, and we started diving into content retreats, um, more the 
kind of the educational side of photography for photographers. Um, when I first started out, I remember like I would set up my, you can't just start out with, I want to be a photographer and not have a portfolio. People want to see what your work looks like. They want to see your style. They want to know that they can trust you um, to take their pictures. So when I first started out, I was lucky enough to have a lot of um, local friends who I would set up shoots with. Um, I call it personal work. Uh, and I would help, you know, figure out their outfits and we would do different poses and it gave me not only, um, a portfolio, but it gave me experience in directing a session. Um, and that experience in the beginning was invaluable. Um, but I really wanted to go to a workshop or educational type styled shoot that not only was I getting um, somebody, el somebody else was doing the work and setting up those shoots, but I would also be able to meet other photographers. And um, I am a big believer in um, befriending people in your community, like, friendships over competition all the way. Um, so I, I was looking and I wasn't finding what I wanted. I finally came across, um, a couple, well, one, and that I signed up for, and she was, it was like five hours south of me. Um, and it worked out perfect. She was a, an equestrian photographer. She did a lot of quest like uh, ranch weddings too. Um, learned a lot from her, went down, did her workshop, saw how, you know, styled shoots were set up. And then a couple of weeks later went to another, um, workshop out in Arizona. So I've been to three workshops, um, that I didn't put on, learned a lot from them and then thought, this is something I want to get into. I want to support other photographers in their journey, um, whether they're just looking to expand their portfolio with Western lifestyle shoots, with um, horse and rider shoots, fine art shoots. And I can talk a little bit more about my fine art um, uh, sessions as well. Um, or just, yeah, meet other photographers and, and have a great weekend. So, uh, Last weekend was our first one up in Washington, the state of Washington, and it was three days, um, four different shoots, uh, Friday evening, Saturday during the day, Saturday night, and then sun sunrise on Sunday. And we had multiple models um, at each. It takes a lot of time and preparation to set up these shoots, not only to find your ideal models with the horses you want, setting up, you know, making sure the location is what you want, um, doing all the liability contracts, doing, um, planning all the outfits, um, because these are meant to be epic styled shoots. Right. Right. You mentioned, uh, fine art, maybe wanting to elaborate on that a little bit more. We had a question on that. How do you differentiate yeah. between equestrian fine art uh, and Western lifestyle photography in your work? Yeah. So my equestrian shoots are um, typically my horse and rider sessions, natural light, sunset, all that. My fine art is are my black background and white background sessions. Typically with just the horse, I also include the rider if they want to be in some of the shots too. Um, so I use a I mean, I, again, don't bring anything extra usually for these. Um, as long as I have a barn aisle way that I can take the pictures of the horse in, that's where I shoot. Um, and then I do all the editing. It's most of it's post processing um, using Photoshop and they are meant to be um, really 
nice, gorgeous pieces of your like artwork of your horse. Your right. horse gets to be on your wall. Um, it's a fine art piece that you can look at every day and be like, wow, look how gorgeous my horse is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then so, my, my Western well, lifestyle so um, is can be cowgirls without their horses, um, much more candid. Um, also can include, I've done a lot of um, turquoise jewelry uh, brands and um, I've done a leather care um, business and the setting up their branding photo shoots for, for them. Yeah. Lots of uh, just well-rounded, lots of things. So let's see, closing thoughts, uh, anything that you'd like to add, feel free to do so. And maybe uh, what's the best way for listeners to contact you if they're interested in the session and uh, a question that I had, I was talking with Brooke earlier. I said, you know, we're in North Carolina uh, would you, do you fly out to North Carolina and would you do a shoot here? And so sort of how does, how does that work and how did folks contact you? Yeah, I do travel. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, so they can contact me through my website, um, or my social media, which is, um, on Instagram, it's Lauren dot and dot photo. Um, and my Facebook, same thing, Lauren Ann Pace Photography. Um, I do travel. I love traveling. Um, typically, you know, I, if, if I can set up multiple shoots in one location or in the, that general area, I can split the travel costs, um, up among multiple right. clients and it's, it's much, um, the great more idea. efficient that way. Great yeah. Idea. In other words, yeah. I'm coming, tell all your friends, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And I'll post it on social media too. When I, if I have a travel date coming up. That's so cool. Well, I have a feeling that after this podcast, you'll probably have quite a few folks reach out to you interested in learning more about photography and then hopefully scheduling some sessions uh, thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate your time and uh, we look forward to talking to you later. No, thank you so much, Brad. I appreciate it. All right. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.